It's 2024 and still, integrating GraphQL into your frontend involves writing tons of boilerplate code and managing complex state. It is a pain, right? And I believe it shouldn't be like that. But before I continue, I'd like to know what are you currently using in your frontend to develop apps that communicate with GraphQL? And which libraries are you using to do that? Let me know in the comment section. All right, so what if I told you you can develop modern, secure, and fast apps and dashboards that connects to your GraphQL APIs in a matter of minutes, so you can forget about the boilerplate, the estate management, and the technical depth, and focus on what it matters? Well, AppSmith takes care of that, and to prove it to you, let me explain how to connect AppSmith to GraphQL and build an app in just two minutes. It's been a long day. Let's go. So independent for what you use to develop your backend, if you implement GraphQL, you'll probably end up with something like this, which is your GraphQL endpoint, you know, to query data and do mutations and so on. In my case, I have a backend running on open source CMS called Strapi, and you can find a link in the description on how to run it on your own to integrate with AppSmith and follow along. In this CMS, I have a collection of events, as you can see here. And the idea that I have is to integrate into AppSmith to build a event management dashboard. So let's go to the playground and build our query first here to give it a shot. So in this case, I'm going to pull the events. That's the name of the collection. And normally, Strapi groups everything into a data object. There, I can pull the ID of the event. And inside each element of the events, Strapi will also group everything into an attributes object. There I can pull, for example, the title, the description, the excerpt of the event, the date, and something like, for example, the category. So if I play that, I should get data. And actually, I don't. And that's because, you know, which developer is not securing that endpoints? That's the way it should be. And I'm also doing that. I'm securing my endpoints, so I have to do an authorization header. So let's do that. Let's pass an authorization header here. And let's pass a barrier token. Barrier token. I always confuse that word. There you go. So if we check that out, now we're getting data into the structure that we sent along. So this is the same thing that we're going to be passing into AppSmith and setting up over there. So now let's go to AppSmith and there I have a event management system. In this case, I have one already built using the REST API, as you can see here, but I want to do it with GraphQL. So let's go to a new page and over there, let's create a new data source. All right, let's click on the plus icon and find the authenticated GraphQL API. There we'll give it a name. I'm going to call it GraphQL and then the URL of the endpoint, which is the same one I was using here in the playground. All right, I paste it in and then I have to pass the authentication header. Now, I don't have to send it here on the headers because AppSmith supports authentication. So let's actually do that because AppSmith is going to securely store our very token and nobody will be able to retrieve it again. So let's select barrier token and here we will paste our barrier token, the same one we used. And now we save that data source. So now having the data source, I can go to the editor section and build our first query. With this query, we're going to be pulling the events very similar to what we did in the playground. So let's create a new query and select GraphQL. And then we will have our GraphQL query builder. As you can see, AppSmith is going to pre-fill some information for us, like for example, the base URL, and it's going to inject the very token as the authorization header. So we don't have to worry about that. So let's give it a name. I'm going to call it get events and here i'm going to actually copy this that i have here because i know that already works let's paste it in and now let's run it and we should get a response from there as you can see it's the same response we got on the playground so that's great now that we have that we can actually go to the ui and start building our application so let's find the list widget because i'm going to be building a list of events let me drag and drop this here. And you can also do that and make it in the shape that you want. And I'm also going to be finding the text for the title. I'm going to put it here and I'm going to name it events. And I'm going to make, I'm going to make it really big, something like this. There you go. That's my title. And now a list is just a repetitive 
uh, elements in uh, AppSmith. So in this case, it's gonna be repeating everything that I built on the first element of the list. So in this case, for example, I really don't have an image for events, so I'm just going to delete the image. That's something that pre pretty much AppSmith does as a placeholder. And now I'm gonna start building how I want the UI to look. So the first thing I'm going to reuse this field that I have here, and typically, typically what's gonna be happening here is that I have to tell this list where the data is gonna be coming from. So click on the list, and normally AppSmith is gonna put a hard-coded value over there. So let's delete that and actually use interpolation to put our get events query. There you go, get events. Then AppSmith normally uh, stores all the information of a query in the data object. So we're gonna select data. Now, here comes some confusion, but this is typically because that's the way that Strapi works, because you saw that Strapi stores everything in a data object, so we have to do data again. And now the actual events, that's the, the name of the structure. And now, finally, the data array. That's the repetitive array that basically AppSmith is gonna use to uh, basically feed the list in our UI. So there you go. Now that might look a bit weird, but that's the way it works because again, AppSmith stores everything on a data object. And then inside that data object is the response from the query, which also happens to be or have the data name. And then inside over there, we have the events and then again, data. And now we can find the array of events that we got from our API. So with that explained, we can now actually go to the uh, each element of the list and start building our uh, elements. So here we're gonna do current item, that's the name that we're gonna be using, current item, that attributes, remember that that's the name Strapi gives. And now let's find the title, and there you go. Here we have the title of the event. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. It's gonna be L. I'm gonna make this a bit larger and also this, the container, so that way we can very easily fit at least three events on this list. And now let's also use this field to, for example, showcase the date of the event. So it's gonna be attributes, that's date. And there you go, that's the date of the event. Now, that date is a bit unreadable, right? I bet any user wouldn't like to see that date. So we can do something like, uh, for example, moment.js, because you know that AppSmith has moment library in each of the applications. So we can do something like moment, pass along the date, and now we can do format, and we can pass the uh, value of the format that we want to give. I'm gonna do this, and now that's pretty readable over there. There you go. I'm gonna make this list a big, a bit larger. There you go. And we can continue to do the same. For example, we can bring another text field here to show the description. So we're gonna do, again, current item. There you go. That attributes, that description. And there we got the description of the event. I'm gonna find this to make it a bit smaller. And there you go. Now, that's <laughs> that's it, that's very simple. That's how we basically can pull data from a GraphQL endpoint, build a query using the uh, authorization header, using our bearer token, and then build an AppSmith application. Now, you can continue to do the same. For example, for our mutation, we can create a new uh, data source here. For example, a new query using the GraphQL, and then uh, basically build our mutation using the interpolation from the UI. For example, we could build a form to create a new event and save that event in the database. Now, we deploy our app application, we should be able to see our list of events, and there you go. That's how easy it's to integrate AppSmith with GraphQL in under two minutes, or something like that. <laughs>